Okay, so today we are going to go over first the answers from yesterday's assignment. Uh, here we have the answers to page 725. So, in letter A, landing on a 5, it's 1 out of 5. The experimental probability is close to the theoretical probability of 1 out of 6. So, theoretically, it should be 1 6. In the experiment, it was 1 5th not landing on one. Well, in the experimental probability, nine out of 10, but theoretically it should be five out of six. Kids, what do you do if you wanna to try to get it closer to the theoretical probability? If your experimental probability isn't close, what do you do? More trials. More trials, that's right. Now let's look at number two. What is the experimental probability of the spinner landing on blue? Well, they did it 12 times, and it only landed on blue once, so it's 1 out of 12. Part B, compare the experimental probability, which was 1 out of 12, and the theoretical probability, which is 1 out of 4, uh, probabilities of the spinner landing on blue. If the probabilities are not close, explain a possible reason for the discrepancy. Well, we talked about they need to do it more. What might be a reason why it doesn't land on blue very often? Yes. That's right. You know, if you're holding it up vertically like they are doing it here, it's not going to land on blue or green hardly ever because the weight of the, the point is probably going to land on yellow or red, isn't it? So if, if there are some variables that can affect different things. Maybe it's bent. You know how you have the, these games after you play them a while, they get a little bent or, or the something happens and it causes it to land on the red or yellow more than on a blue or something like that. Okay, let's go on to number three. The frequency table shows the results of a survey of 70 zoo visitors who were asked to name their favorite animal. All right, we have bears, elephants, monkeys, penguins, and snakes. The frequency table shows the results of a survey. Okay, so in letter A, Suppose 540 people visit the zoo. Predict how many people will choose the monkey. Okay, here I set it up as a proportion. Monkey over total. Well, the total number of peop uh, people in this is 70. So 21 liked the monkey out of 70. How many people will like the monkey out of 540 people? 162. Okay, you cross multiply and divide. Um, it says, suppose 720 people visit the zoo. Predict how many people will choose the penguin. All right, so for the penguin, this is the problem down here. 13 out of 70 liked a penguin. Out of 70, how many people will like a penguin out of 720? Well, you cross multiply and divide, and you end up getting 134. Any questions on how to do the cross products and divide in here? You're all really good at that. All right, you did not have to do number four. Let's go to the next page, 726. On this page, you had to do number five. Uh, what is the theoretical probability of landing on A? Well, one out of three. All right, you have three choices. They're equally sized, so one out of three. The results of the experiment are shown in the table. What is the experimental probability of landing on an A? Well, six out of 25 times. And landing on a C, 13 out of 50. Now that's what you get when you simplify your fractions, kids. Do you understand um, when you simplify your fractions? Um, for A, there's a total here of oh, 100, so the total is 100. So if you put 24 over 100, it equals 6 25ths. Do you see how they got that? 24 over 100 simplifies to 6 25ths. And 26 over 100 simplifies to 13 50ths. Make a drawing of what the spinner might look like based on ex experimental probabilities. Okay, so according to the experiment, half of them land on B and a fourth land on A and C. Do you see how to draw that spinner? There they wanted, according, if looking at this, what do you think the spinner looks like? 
Well, half of them land on B, a fourth, and a fourth. Does everyone have a spinner drawn now for that? If not, do it at this time. Okay, did you have to do any other problems on 726? No, then we had to do 727, and number 9 was done for you, so you had to do number 10. Okay, and the, the directions say, uh, find each experimental probability, then compare the experimental probability to its theoretical probability. If the probabilities are not close, explain a possible reason for the discrepancy. Okay. 7 out of 12 is the experimental probability. Um, it is not close to the theoretical probability, which is 1 over 4. A uh, possible explanation, explanation is there were not enough trials. Okay? That's always the what they like doing in the book, and uh, that's a good answer for the test. Number 11. Um, how many... Uh, would you expect to buy a birthday card out of 125 customers? Well, you would have 50. All right. Any questions on that? And then in number 12, oh, to get that one, you have 40 over, what was the total number of cards sold? 100. So 40 over 100 equals X over 125. Okay. You could simplify your fraction and have it um, two fifths equals x over 125 and you say oh five times uh, 50 will give you 125 that's not quite right four tenths two fifths um, on that so um, let's go on to number yeah, that will give you that. in number 12 Use the graph at the right. What is the probability that a mother received a gift of flowers or plants? Write the probability as a fraction in simplest form. Well, 28% simplifies to 7 over 25. That's not hard. Suppose 400 mothers will receive a gift. Predict how many will receive flowers or plants. Well, that answer will be 112. And you just once again write it as a fraction and um, or as a proportion cross multiply and divide and you will get 112 any questions all right now let's go over our next lesson and the next lesson is uh, lesson three and we are dealing with compound events all right any page 733 Okay, before we go to lesson three, I want to talk about fair and unfair games. You all know most of the time if you're playing an unfair game or not. Sometimes you might create an unfair game to play with somebody that you like to beat, like maybe a, a, a one of your brothers or sisters or a cousin or a friend. But we want to talk about how to identify a fair and unfair game. All right, uh, it says... In a counter toss game, players toss three two-color counters. The winner of each game is determined by how many counters land with either the red or yellow side facing up. Find out if this game is fair or unfair. Well, mathematically speaking, a two-player game is fair if each player has an equal chance of winning. A game is unfair if there is not such a chance. Now, we're not going to take time to play this game today. If there is time later in the week for us to do these activities, we will. But we're a little short on time. Um, so we are now going to go on to... Oh, we're not going to talk about how to create an unfair game. Um, but you do know a fair game is when each person has an equal chance of winning and an unfair game would be one where they don't have. And that's basically what this was all about, was creating fair and unfair games. So now that you know that statement, let's go on to page 733, the probability of compound events. This is where more than one event's going to happen. All right, some of our key vocabulary words today, sample space, tree diagram, and compound event. Amy wants to pack enough items to create six different outfits. 
She packs one jacket, three shirts, and two pairs of jeans. Can Amy create six different outfits from her clothing items? Well, you complete the chart. Outfit one, jacket, shirt one, jeans one. Jacket, shirt one, jeans two. Jacket, shirt two, shirt two jeans one. Jacket, shirt two, jeans two. So let's just use J2 for jeans two, okay? Then she has jacket, shirt three, jeans one. Jacket, S3 for shirt three, jeans two. Do you see what I'm doing here and making a list? There's a pattern. We're going to learn how to do these patterns. We're going to learn how to do a tree diagram and how to create a sample space. This is right here we're starting to do a sample space. We're going to skip two and three and just go straight into how to do the sample space and the tree diagrams. All right, on page 734, this is where we get into the nitty-gritty of our lesson. The set of all the possible outcomes in a probability experiment is called the sample space. Organized lists, tables, and tree diagrams can be used to represent the sample space. Okay, so let's look at a couple different ways to do this. Number one, the three students chosen to represent Mr. Balderick's Bald Eric's class in a school assembly are shown. All three of them need to sit in a row on the stage. Use a list to find the sample space for the different ways they can sit in a row. Okay, use A for Adrian, C for Carlos, and G for Greg. It makes it much simpler than writing the full names out. So, we could do A, C, G, A, G, C, C, A, G, C, G, A, G, A, C, and G, C, A. So the sample space consists of six outcomes. Now, it's easy to skip these sometimes. And a, a technique that they have come up with is called the tree diagram to make sure you don't skip one of the outcomes. I know yesterday when we were flipping the three coins, I forgot heads, tails, tails because I didn't do a tree diagram. Had I done a tree diagram yesterday, I would have caught it. So let's look at how to do a tree diagram. All right, so here we have, it says, a car can be purchased in blue, silver, red, or purple. Okay, they're going to use B for blue, S for silver, R for red, and P for purple. It also comes in a convertible or hard top. Use a table or a tree diagram to find the sample space for the different types in which the car can be purchased. Okay, so we're going to do colors, all right? So I'm going to do color blue. We have four of them, blue, silver, red, purple, okay? This is a horizontal bar or tree diagram. You can also do vertical ones too. Um, here, I'll start there. For a vertical one, I start here, and I'm going to go to blue. My next color is silver. My next cover color is red, and the last color is purple. Okay, so you could do it this way too, or you can do it um, horizontal. So you could do blue convertible, blue hardtop. So I could do B, C, B, H, S, C, S, H, R, C, R hard top, purple, what a convertible, purple hard top. There aren't too many good looking purple cars really out there. Every now and then you might see a nice custom paint of purple, but I don't see very many purple cars. Lots of blue, silver, red, purple, not so much. But those are your different outcomes. Now, this is your sample space here. How many outcomes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I get the same number here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So do you see how to do the tree diagram? All right. Now let's go to letter A. It says, find the sample space using a list, table, or tree diagram for a sandwich consisting of one type of meat and one type of bread. All right. You can do it a horizontal way or a vertical way. I'm going to do it a vertical way up here. I'm going to put this on pause. Taste. 
All right. It's just white bread, basically, um, sourdough bread is. Now, here are two examples of tree diagrams. Once again, you have the same number of outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, six outcomes. If you do it horizontal, one, two, three, four, five, six outcomes. Any questions? All right, let's go to the next page. Um, finding probability of a compound event. A compound event consists of two or more simple events. The probability of a compound event, just as with simple events, is the fraction of outcomes in the sample space for which the compound event occurs. All right, so now let's look at what this says. Suppose you toss a quarter, a dime, and a nickel. Find the sample space. Okay, here's the sample space. What is the probability of getting three tails? All right, well, when you do this, how many outcomes do we have when you toss three coins? How many different outcomes could you end up with? Eight. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the denominator would be eight. How many ways can you get three tails? One. Now, this is how it will read. The probability of three tails equals one out of eight. Any questions? Everyone knows how to read that? Good. Now, you are going to do letter B. The animal shelter has both male and female Labrador retrievers in yellow, brown, or black. There is an equal number of each kind. What is the probability of choosing a female yellow Labrador retriever? Show your work in the space below. All right, so you're going to make a tree diagram, and then you're going to figure out what the probability is of getting a female Labrador retriever. All right, so let's do that. All right, so here, this is a horizontal tree diagram. Sometimes people like to start here with the very beginning so it looks more like a tree. Um, you don't have to do that, but sometimes kids like to. And you have female or male. You can have female yellow, female brown, female black, male yellow, male brown, male black. And um, so the sample space, you end up with one, two, three, four, five, six. So your denominator is going to be a six. And how many female yellow labs are there out of this your sample space? Just one. So the probability of a female yellow lab equals one out of six. Any questions on that? Okay, the word random. When choosing an outcome, assume that each outcome is chosen randomly. And we talked about that. It's, you know, you don't, you just randomly pick, not looking at anything in particular. Now let's go to page 736 and look at example number four. In example number four, it says, to win a carnival prize. Now we all know these carnival games are not fair games. Almost all carnival games have a trick to it because that's why they're carnival games. They don't want to give prizes away to fairly. They want to make sure you work for it so they can make more money. All right, but anyway, to win a carnival prize, you need to choose one of three doors labeled one through three. Then you need to choose a red, yellow, or blue box behind each door. What is the probability that the prize is in the blue, is in the blue or yellow box behind door two? Okay, so here are your outcomes. One red, one yellow, one blue. Two red, two yellow, two blue. Three red, three yellow, three blue. So, it says the table shows that there are a total of nine outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two of the outcomes are favorable. Okay, door two, yellow, door two, blue. So, the probability is two out of nine. Any questions on that? All right, now let's do our guided practice on page 736. For each situation, find the sample space. A coin is tossed twice. Okay, so you have heads or tails, right? So here it is, 
heads or tails. That's the first time. Then on the second time, you could have heads, heads, or it could be heads, tails. Now, if you had tails the first time, the second time you toss it, you can get tails, heads, or you can have um, tails, tails. There, I'm putting an extra letter there. So, in this one, it, that is your sample space. That's all they wanted. All right? In number two, a pair of brown or black sandals are available in sizes 7, 8, and 9. All right? I have brown and I have black. Okay, I'm going to use BL for black and B for brown. So I could have a B7. I can have a B8, or you could have a B9. For black, I'll just use a different color, I could have a black 7, I could have a black 8, and a black 9. So here, um, that would be your sample space for that one. Okay, what are the answers? This would be considered your sample space there. Those are your choices. Okay, and number three. Gerardo spins a spinner with four equal sections. They will one, two, three, or A, B, C, D twice. If letter A is spun at least once, Gerardo wins. Otherwise, Odell wins. Use a list to find the sample space. Okay, so we could do, here they want a list. It could be A and then an A. You could have an A and a B. You could have an A and a C and an A and a D, right? Now, let's say you get a B on your first spin. I'm going to change colors. I could have a B, then an A, a B, B, a B, C, and a B, D. All right? Now, let's say you get a C first. Then you could have a C A, C B, C C, C D. And finally, you end up with a D first. D A, D B, D C, and D D. So here they wanted a list, and we listed all of them. Then it says, find the probability that Odell wins. Well, how does Odell win? Let's see. If the letter A is spun at least once, uh, Gerardo wins. So here he would we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So Gerardo has seven ways to win, 7 out of 16. That means Odell has a better chance of winning. Is this a fair game? No, because Odell has a better chance of winning. That person can win 9 out of 16 times. So that's the question it asked. Any questions on how to do that? Okay, so what are you going to do for homework? That's what you're all thinking. So for your homework tonight and classwork today, you're going to do all of page 737. It takes a while to do these because you have to make lists and things. Um, and then on page 738, you have to do number 7. And I think that'll be all um, that we will have to do um, for today. Oh, number 9. I like it when you have to find the error. You do have to do number 9 on this page too. So on page 738... You have to do number 7 and number 9. And on page 737, do all of them. Yes. That's not the right page. Okay, are your book numbers different than mine? Oh, interesting. Okay, so let me put this on pause. Okay, so there has a, there's a problem in the printing of your books. Your 738 is a, not the correct page. It doesn't match our lesson. So you're not going to do page 738 in your book since it doesn't match. So on page 739, 
Um, we'll just do 12 and 13. So, page 739. You're going to do 12 and 13. It's a shame because I really like the problems that were on that other page in my... But your books, um, they have a problem in their printing. Okay, so that's what you need to do. And I'm going to let you work in groups in just a moment. Um, I'm going to wrap this up.